Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our fourth grade class. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. This week happens to be the week that ends with the 100th day of school. So that happens on Friday and today is Monday, January 29th, 2024. And today was also the first day of our I Ready Reading AP2 Diagnostic Test. This is the last iReady diagnostic test that the students will take the school year since the one in May is replaced with our state test, which is the final progress monitoring assessment that will determine the reading levels and the math levels for the students. So the bulk of my class today was my students working on their iReady diagnostic, and that was both for my advanced group and my ELL group. With my advanced group, once they finish their assessment or the first part of the assessment, because this is a two-day assessment, they went ahead and worked on completing a central idea and summarizing graphic organizer, because after checking their reading reciprocal teaching organizer from last week, I noticed they needed more practice with recalling how we write a summary. So this is the graphic organizer that I gave to all the students. They have to write the topic, the central idea using that topic, three relevant details that tell more about the central idea, and use the central idea and the relevant details to write the summary. This here is the one that I created as my example. So the topic was rules for a world without rules, and I put the central idea here, three of the relevant details in my own words that tell me more about that, and then I used that to help me write my summary. For my ELL group, they were working on practicing connecting the cause with effects. So I created this handout where they had to cut the bottom half. They cut these puzzle pieces out and glue them next to the place where they are missing. So this is my completed example so that you can see how it comes together. And this goes again for the same story a world without rules. That's what we ended up doing today. I also met with some of the ladies from the Department of Advanced Academics for my district, and we were talking about how we're meeting the needs of gifted students in the reading classroom using our Wonders curriculum. And then I was given a task to think about different ways to meet the needs of different groups of gifted students within a classroom. So I came up with these different slides that I made on Canva. So here is the presentation. So gifted education, meeting the needs of our students. And I started with uh, how to meet the needs of students that are above grade level. And these are three different things that I put together, literature circles, independent projects, and technology integration. And then I went to the needs of students who are below grade level in reading and I went ahead and put small group instruction, differentiated materials, visual aids, and organizers. For meeting the needs of students who need motivation, I put together choice and autonomy, interactive activities, and gamified learning. And finally, how we can provide enrichment for all gifted students within a classroom, critical thinking challenges, debates and discussions, and creative writing prompts. So that is all for today, Monday and what I was able to accomplish today. I'm getting ready to leave for the day, so I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to the end of the day Tuesday. Just wrapped up with my Minecraft club. Today was not that much to share. I started with my block two, my ELO learners, and we spent mo much of the block, well, pretty much the entire block, finishing up the iReady reading diagnostics since today was day two. And then they went to lunch when we came back from lunch they had like a little coloring break just to you know relax them since they were working so so hard some of my students made tremendous gains I had one student that went like I think she jumped like three levels and like three grade levels and is now on grade level and she's an ELL ESOL level one so that was amazing she went up 134 points something I don't think I've ever seen 
with the diagnostics in iReady. So I'm very proud of her. She was so sweet. She's like, you know, the only way I'm able to do this is because I have teachers like you. So that was really, really nice. And then I had other students that jumped up two levels. So that was really great. With my block one, which I had at the end of the day, they pretty much were working on iReady diagnostic the entire time, even after PE. And I still have about 11 students that need to finish in that class. So I actually have to wait till Friday for them to finish because tomorrow the math teacher, my co-teacher is going to start the I ready math diagnostic and they'll continue Thursday. So on Friday, once because she's not going to be here, I'm going to just have whoever hasn't finished the reading diagnostic to finish. But it's so nice to have the individual one-on-one -on -one data chats with the students to show them how they improved. And if they didn't improve, what we can do to support them and make sure that they make progress as we continue in the school year. So that's pretty much all I have for today. I know it's short, sweet, but that's pretty much all we did today. But tomorrow's Wednesday, so I'll let you know how that goes. It's the end of the day Wednesday, and I just wanted to come to you and let you know how today went. I am about to leave on contract hours, but there's traffic outside. I wanted to leave right at 3.30. It's around 3.30. It's um, 3.40 actually, but there's really bad traffic outside. So I'm gonna wait it off a little bit and then I'm gonna go home because I've been staying really late, especially Monday since I'm staying because my son has a class at the university till 7.40 and it's near me. So I can just pick him up right after work. And yesterday, of course, Minecraft. So I left yesterday after Minecraft Club. I didn't stay too late. But today I want to leave on time. Tomorrow I want to leave on time. Friday I want to leave on time. You know what I mean? Because I've been staying so late and it's, it's no bueno for me. But today I had a regular instructional day with both of my classes. Since they were doing their iReady diagnostic for math with my co-teacher, both classes, when they had her. This morning I started with my block one and the first thing we ended up doing for our smart start today was to have them complete that graphic organizer on the central idea and summary. I showed that to you earlier in the blog, so I'm not gonna show it to you again. So they were working on that. And then after they worked on that, I gave them the little puzzle pieces for the cause and effect, just to have them complete it on their own. With my ELO students, I guided them through it. And then we ended up doing with my block one, the fine text evidence for that shared read on a world without rules. So here is that selection. So these are the fine text evidence questions. So we were focusing on cause and effect, the ask and answer questions reading strategy. We were also working with the headings and we also worked with pronunciation and Latin roots. So we went ahead and did that and then the students completed a graphic organizer for cause and effect. I found that I needed to spend a little bit more time with cause and effect because I noticed my students were not completely understanding it. So we reviewed this page in our reading writing companion and this is the cause and effect chart that they did for the first section of the passage, A Strange Morning. So then it was their turn to do it on their own and do it on the section, A Community in Confusion and find four cause and effect relationships to add to their graphic organizer. I had them work on this and as they were working and finishing, I walked around with my clipboard and my student checklist so I can check off who was done and I graded their papers right there and then as I was cruising around the classroom with my clipboard. And then students that were done with that cause and effect graphic organizer then worked under respond to reading question for that selection. And that respond to reading question was right on the very next page right here do you agree with the author that laws and government are important and they have some sentence starters here to help them structure their response so that's what we ended up doing for block one for block two we went ahead and looked back at the main passage a world without rules and then i had them think about cause and effect i reviewed that with them as well i went over the same pages in the reading writing companion that looked at the keywords for cause and effect and then I had them go back into the passage and look at that section of community and confusion and I put it on the PowerPoint slide so we can highlight those keywords for cause and effect and then use that to find cause and effect relationships to help them complete the same graphic organizer. So that section for a community and confusion is actually separated into two pages. So this is the bottom of one page and then at the next page is the top of the next page. 
So as you can see, we were highlighting some of our cause and effect keywords. And then I did not put this all together um, at the beginning. I just modeled one for them. And then I had them look at other cause and effect relationships. The green is for cause, the blue is for effect, and had them write the, the cause and then the effect. And then at the end, when everybody was pretty much done, we went ahead and did it together. Obviously, this section has way more cause and effect relationships than just four, but they only had to find four of those. After that, the students got their argumentative writing planner. We reviewed the essential question for the expository prompt, or sorry, the argumentative prompt, are genetically modified foods beneficial because this group hasn't finished that essay. So we completed this. Some of them, of course, didn't remember the sources. So that's why I went ahead and I printed out the sources so that the students could use a highlighter to highlight the benefits and problems of genetically modified foods. So this is the first source, which is the shared read. And this is the second source, which is the anchor text. And that's what we're gonna be doing continuing tomorrow. So we finish annotating the first source, highlighting in green the benefits, highlighting in yellow the problems, and we'll continue to do that with the second source tomorrow. My hope is that that class will be able to finish that essay this week on Friday, and the other class is going to start working on their invasive species essay. I do have to have students finish diagnostic for both classes, but that won't be until Friday. Friday is also the 100th day of school, so that's very exciting. And that's basically all that I have to share for today, Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, coming to you from Thursday. Today was a really good day, and um, by the way, happy February 1st. I can't believe January is gone, but here we are, new month and new theme for this month obviously black history month and also love and kindness month so we have a lot of things to look forward to the students actually have a valentine's kind of day or kindness dance next week wednesday so that's really cool and the school is actually having them buy little valentine grams for their friends or their teachers so it's very cute and i'm looking forward to what this month is going to bring also february this year is sleep year so we get an extra day in february so that's also fun tomorrow is the 100th day of school it's also groundhog day so tomorrow my co-teacher won't be here so i'm going to make sure since the students are not doing their math diagnostic they're pretty much done with the math diagnostic, but I still have about 11 students in one class and three in another that need to finish their diagnostics. So what I'm planning to do tomorrow is as soon as the students come into my class, they'll grab their laptops and they'll work on finishing that assessment. And if they're already done with their assessment, then they'll just work on getting their eye ready minutes and those lessons passed. So that's my little plan for tomorrow. For today, I started with my block two, my ELO group this morning. And we ended up reading See How They Run, which is our anchor text. And we read about halfway through the passage because it's a pretty lengthy passage. And I wanted to guide them towards discovering, putting all their detective hats and discovering cause and effect relationships. So I gave them a little graphic organizer for cause and effect so that they can start accumulating those relationships as soon as they saw them. Here is my version of that cause and effect graphic organizer. So we started by looking at the first two pages. So we went ahead and wrote those. And then we looked at the next two pages and chose this as our cause and effect relationship. So then the rest of the passage, we're gonna look for two more so that they can go ahead and fill this out. Then for writing, we continued with our sources. So for source two, we grabbed our highlighters and we highlighted in green the benefits of genetically modified foods. And in yellow, we highlighted the problems. So then I went ahead and, and had the class vote on whether they thought GM foods was beneficial or not. So I created this poll on classroom screen and I had them come up to the board with the results hidden until I had all the students you know, vote on whether genetically modified foods were beneficial or not. And I have only 25 students in that class, but two students 
push the button down here twice uh, by accident, but it's okay. Then I revealed the results and I noticed that most of them agreed that GM foods were not beneficial. So I went with the majority of the class and decided to make my model for this particular class be that GM foods is not beneficial. So now we need to find our reasons. So on the back, I had them create this very simple graphic organizer to help us with our planning. So we put here, GM foods are not beneficial. Reason one, and I had the students give these to me, little research has been done on the consequences. Reason two, health concerns and may trigger allergies. Now, because I had some students also choose the opposing side, I also created on another sheet of paper an example of how that one would look. So GM foods are beneficial would be the claim. Reason, less chemicals are used to grow crops and that's good for the environment. Reason two, more food is grown and available to feed hungry nations. So now we're ready to then take it over here and write that and then come to our conclusion and wrap that up. So that was what we ended up doing for my block one or my block two, I should say, my ELO students. Then when I got my block one this afternoon, they were working on a similar thing of looking for the cause and effect relationships in the passage, see how they run. So I ended up having them put themselves in groups they rearranged the desk so that they sat in clusters so that they can work together. I gave them a nine by 18 manila paper so that they can create a poster on four cause and effect relationships that they found in the two pages that I assigned them. So this is how I set up the manila paper, have them fold it in half so they can draw the line down the middle and label cause effect and show them an example. So the first cause gets written down on this side the effect in this first cause goes here and so forth. And I had them write their names at the bottom and today's date. Some of the teams got creative and decided to write five cause and effect relationships and I don't have any problem with them doing that. I thought that was a great idea. Now, that is my class with 27 students and it's my advanced group, so obviously they love to talk and their noise levels get really high. But we wanted to make sure that we were not too loud as they were working in groups because next door is my co-teacher and she was administering the iReady math diagnostic. So one thing that really helped us to make sure our noise levels were low is classroom screen. Check this out. I just created this one. They have a noise level and my document camera, I should say not a document camera, my web camera has a microphone. So what I did is I increased the max noise so that it wouldn't be too sensitive and every time it gets really loud, it dings. For example, that is an example, and there's a refresh so they don't continue to talk. So what I did is I gave them a goal. They couldn't get to 20. If they got 20 dings, then the group work would end and they will have an alternative assignment. I wanna say that this idea was super simple and super effective. The students were able to keep their noise levels down and also complete their work. I had pretty much almost all the teams except maybe two of them finish and I'm so proud of them. They worked really hard. Now, what was I doing during that time? I was walking around. I sat with some groups that may have needed a little bit more support and they got to doing what they needed to do and I'm very, very proud of them. So all in all, it was a really great day. I'm proud of my students. I'm proud of the work that we accomplished today. And tomorrow's Friday. So I can't wait to wrap up this week and let you know how it went. Hello everyone, it's the end of the day Friday and it's the 100th day of school. I would like to say that we actually did something fun today for the 100th day of school, but we didn't. I needed to have students finish their testing because of the testing window. And I still have about three students that need to finish overall but I went from having like 11 kids I needed to finish to only three, so I'm grateful. So for the most part, both classes were on the computer, finishing either the assessment or their iReady minutes or Imagine Learning minutes and lessons. So I know that's how our day ended up being, but we did take the kids outside and they ran around at the end of the day for 30 minutes for recess and they had a good time and we had some silly moments here and out um, around the day. So it wasn't so bad, but yes. <laughs> you know, on other days, on other years, we do things, but even the school didn't really do much 
this year for the 100th day. They went around and they gave 100th day goodie bags to all the students that have had perfect attendance for 100 days of school. They also had the first and second graders or maybe just the first graders dress up like little old people. So that was really cute. But other than that, the school really didn't do much. And that was basically our day. But I have all my lesson plans ready to go for next week. Next week is a five day school week. And I can't wait to let you know how everything goes then. So stick around. If you enjoyed coming around with me for this week of school, go ahead and hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day. And don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.